What's up everybody? Uh, it's been pouring rain out here. It started raining yesterday morning and just finally finished. The sun finally came out. Uh, but as far as me mowing today, nope, not going to happen. It's so wet out there I can't mow. Uh, so I figured I'd take the perfect opportunity to do, I guess, sort of like a shop talk video. Uh, and I'm going to go over a brand new 2023 uh, Skag V-Ride 2. Now what I want to do on the purpose of this video is uh, go over the machine first, show you how it works, uh, go over what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and more importantly, the price. And how to get one if you have to finance it, you don't have the cash for it, you don't want to put it on a credit card or anything else. Uh, there's a way easier way to do it. So I'm going to go over the machine, I'm going to jump up here and show you, go over it just real quick, how it works and operates, and then we'll go from there. All right, coming from the top of the machine, I'm just going to go over all the, this stuff real quick, and then we're going to walk around the machine and do the rest. Uh, here's your ignition. There's your hour meter right here. You got your PTO. Pull this up to engage the blades. Push it down to disengage the blades. You have your throttle, your choke. The new one for this machine, 2023, is the charging port if you need to charge something while you're mowing. Coming over here is the parking brake. Push it off to disengage it, pull it up to engage it. Here's your deck. It's in transport height right now. That's when it's locked all the way back in place. If you wanna drop it to your mowing height, the preferred height you want, you push the button and drop it forward. To redo it, lock it back up. I always lock it back up when I'm going on a trailer, otherwise you'll scrape the bottom of that and it'll be a pain to change the blades. So after that, you've got obviously your gas tank gas meter fuel shut off switch right here and that's pretty much it so now we're going to walk around the side of it and i'll show you the rest if you notice a difference between the uh, v-ride ones the original ones and the v-ride 2 it's a fixed plate uh, i don't like this i'll explain why after but it's a fixed plate you're basically standing more over the axles coming around to the side it's got the bigger tires. If you had a V-Ride 1 and it had, uh, let's see, 52, 61s, uh, any of the bigger ones, the back tires were bigger. For the smaller, this is a 36. For the smaller 36s, you had really small tires. The, this comes with the big tires now, and I love it. To change the setting for, uh, for, your, for your mowing height, it's so much easier than the other V-Ride. The other one had a little pin back here. You had to pull the pin out and then you had to adjust it. This, all it does, I can't do it because I have this up, but you'll see the little notch right there. All you do is turn this up and then it slides right out. And then you put it where you want it to go and then you slide it back down and that's it. It stays in place. This one, uh, engines are, you can get like different variations of the engines. This one's a Kawasaki FX600V. It's a 19 horsepower uh, electric start. I know the old ones, you had the option of getting a pull start. Uh, I did not. I've always done electric on all my machines. Uh, it's, yeah, I just feel like doing that is kind of a, kind of a lot to pull, <laughs> to pull start every lawn. Uh, anyway, here's your air filter in here. Same exact one as the old one. Uh, you have your muffler down here. I believe, and I don't quote me on this, I don't know the exact uh, facts to it. I feel like this machine overall length is shorter than the, the original V-Rides. Now to get to everything under here, your pulleys and all that stuff, it's got a screw here, a screw there, you just unscrew them and this plate comes right up. We'll go over the other side. Comes with a cup holder. I've never actually used it, nor, nor do I plan on using it. It's just not really something I'm into. Uh, it's got this little thing. If you want to put something in there, maybe like uh, your phone or something or uh, iPod or anything, if you listen to music, you could put that in there. I use it for trash just because it's, it's an easier trash thing to use. Here's your battery box right here, oil. And your drain plug is down here, which I do like. I'll explain that after. And that is basically it. Now, as far as everything that I, I do like about it, they've made on the new V-Rides, everything has been very accessible. Uh, the battery box is on the outside, which has made it so much easier. Um, 
I know on the other ones it's kind of a pain to get to, but with it having it on the outside, it's so much easier. Uh, as far as the oil, the drain plug is right here. It's the same setup as the other engine, the oil filters here, and then you've got the uh, dipstick right here. But the drain plug was facing the outside. It was more down here, and you had to twist it, uh, trying to crank the wrench to go this way. And it was really hard to do. So when they put it on top, all you have to do is insert it. The wires are pretty much all out of the way, and you're turning it this way. So it's so much easier. Uh, definitely a way better feature on this machine than the old one. Makes oil changes a lot easier. Uh, another thing that you'll notice on the new machine is the safety switch. There used to be a switch right here uh, that came with the safety switch, and this bar would kind of extend up a little bit more, and you had to hold the bar down in line to uh, engage the safety switch so that you could mow. It doesn't have that anymore. That switch was actually moved down to the foot plate, and uh, I hate it. I hate it down there. I'll explain it in a second. So... It does make operating it a lot easier as opposed to the other one trying to tr actually train employees on it. It was pretty difficult that you had to hold the bar down. You don't have to do that now. Uh, the front bars are a lot bigger. I do like that. These are bigger. I do like that. You know, same way to operate. Push them both forward. It goes forward. Both backwards. It goes backwards. Then, you know, turning left, turning right, all that. I'm sure you guys already know how to do it. But it's definitely, uh, I, I do like it a lot more. As far as underneath goes, they have this plate underneath, which makes it a little bit hard to uh, get everything accessible. However, you can undo this one, and there's one right on the other side, and this will lift right off, and it's so much easier to access everything underneath. So it just lifts up and pulls off and you can get to everything. Uh, an issue that I had with the old machine, the hydraulic oil was over here and it was really hard because you had to jam a funnel down the top and try not to get it to leak all over the place. Now the hydraulic oil is right in the middle. It's right here and it's so much easier to check. Uh, everything is all right here. If you need to get underneath, you undo these and this plate lifts right up and that's it. Okay, the one thing that I don't like about this machine, one of the things I don't like is the, the stand-on plate right here. When they put the safety switch here, you can't step off the machine or the machine will shut off because of the safety switch. So if you're walking it up a trailer or in our case, walking it into the back of a truck bed, we use ramps, uh, custom built ramps to get it into the back of the truck bed. We have to walk the machine up. We can't drive it, it's too dangerous. So in that case, if we were to step off the machine, it shuts off. So the safety switch is actually down in here, and it's that, if you can see it, it's that uh, gray and black thing right here. So every time you step on it, the switch disengages, and then every time you get off, it engages and the machine shuts off. If you can see it moving, now, one way that I did it, uh, I don't recommend it. It's, I mean, it's obviously, it's up to you. It's your choice. Uh, I took it off. I unplugged it and I bought a new switch. Here's the harness to it right here. And I just zip tied it up here. So the new one, uh, the safety switch that I have is actually back here. So we can get off the machine if we need to, and it'll still run. Uh, I do not recommend it unless you know exactly what you're doing. Um, and one other thing I don't like, I'll show you in a second. Okay, the other thing that I don't like about this machine is the oil changes. Doing the oil changes on this one is a little bit uh, harder than the other one. The other V-Rides, if you come underneath, I'm trying to angle this for you to show you underneath, there's a uh, clear tube that comes in the middle right here. So you can slide your, your uh, drip pan underneath and drain the oil out of it. For this V-Ride, it's over here and it kind of bumps almost against this tire. So you really have to nudge your pan underneath and make sure that you get it under there all the way. I do miss the old one because I never leaked oil on the new one. I do tend to leak a little bit more oil because it does drip down there. As far as the machine itself, I would say compared to 
the V-Ride 1, uh, I do like this one better. I, I actually prefer this one. Um, I do think it's, it's a lot better. Um, comfort wise with this big back pad, my knees rest down here as opposed to the other one where it was more along like my thighs or like uh, down by my stomach. And uh, I didn't like that. If I hit a bump or anything, I really took that to my body as opposed to uh, just letting it like bump my knees into padding. Um, as far as the plate, the plate still, it's the plate. It, I mean, comfort wise, it's the same as the other ones. Uh, I do like the big tires on the 36 inch models. Uh, definitely makes it more traction. Uh, as far as everything else, I would say it's overall, it's, it's relatively the same. If you operated the V-Ride 1, you can easily do the two. It's pretty much the same. Did take a little bit of getting used to the first week, but after that, it was, I mean, it was just like I've, I've driven it before. It was pretty easy. For this machine, the new models, this is, again, it's a 2023. Uh, this one was $9,300. I know everybody wants to know price. How much does it cost? $9,300. That's what it is. It is a very expensive machine. Uh, you can check to see if Skag has any deals that they'll do at your local dealerships. For example, for mine, when I bought this, they had $700 off. So I got $700 off. Uh, if you would like to buy one and you don't have the cash for it, uh, I do not suggest putting it on a credit card. You can go to sheffieldfinancial.com and they will uh, hook you up with some rates. Uh, from there, you can apply for it, apply uh, to get it. Uh, but yeah, sheffieldfinancial.com, they will square you away. They've got awesome deals. Some of them are like 0% interest for 36 months, 0% for 48. Some of them are really low interest rates. So it's definitely better than putting it on Sheffield than a credit card. Don't put it on a credit card. Obviously, if you have cash for it, cash would be better. Uh, I highly suggest the machine. I love it. Uh, Skag has always done a great job for me. And if you are in the area of Maryland on the Eastern Shore, check out my friends at Eastern Service Corporation. They're a Skag and Cub Cadet and Steel dealer, easternservicecorporation.com. They're in Cambridge, Maryland. These guys are awesome. Family-owned business. Uh, they treat me good. They, um, yeah, they're excellent, excellent people. One thing I do want to bring up before I go, if you are new to commercial mowers or buying them uh, and you're looking for kind of tips and tricks on how to do it, uh, one thing that I would really highly suggest, if you're looking into Kawasaki engines, they're all pretty simple to understand. FX, there's a FS, FR, uh, there might be a few others here and there, I'm not too sure. But they're all different kinds of what they're made for. Definitely ask your dealer or do some research before you go in there. The FX is a commercial engine. It's a true commercial engine. It's built for commercial use. There's always debates online that you'll read about people saying like, uh, you know, you don't need that. It's, it's overpriced, whatever. Uh, the, this machine and all the machines that I have, we mow roughly 300 lawns a week. And that's in four days, uh, Monday through Thursday. We don't mow Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Those are open for rain, equipment breakdown, stuff like that. We use these machines and it, yeah, we use and abuse these machines and they have to withstand that. Downtime, as you know, is a, is a real killer in this business. So uh, I do have to use the true commercial machines. There's other ones that are built for more of like a weekend warrior. If you're a guy that just goes out and cuts on weekends, maybe a couple lawns after work, uh, is the FX good for you? Yeah, it's obviously it would be, but there's cheaper alternatives to it. You don't have to get this one. Uh, but just pay attention to it. If you're trying to get like a uh, like a high high grade like residential mower uh, model, which I believe is like the FR. Don't quote me on all this stuff. Uh, again, I only use the FX. Um, it's not going to last as long. You're going to start running into a lot of problems with it after a couple thousand hours. Things are really going to start to break and go go wrong. So uh, definitely pay attention to the, the engine model. That will help you out the most. For the most part, all mowers, they're pretty much the same. Uh, it's all got a good deck. Uh, real heavy-duty metal. I mean, I mean, it says heavy-duty commercial, but it's... Yeah, yeah, they're all relatively the same. Uh, for us, Skag has always done the best. They've always put up with the abuse that we've we've put them through. Um, I have literally cracked them in half in the frame, uh, and yeah, we've welded them back together. And these things are like a, a 
uh, insane workhorse for us. Love Skag. Uh, but again, pay attention to the engine. Just look at the engine, learn the engines, because that's the most important thing. Uh, so yeah, Skag V-Ride 2. There you go. I hope you like it. If you have any questions, let me know. Just put them in the comments. I'll try to answer them as best I can uh, or try to help you out as much as I can. Uh, if you do have a specific question of anything on it, I'm pretty familiar with this machine. Uh, I have like four or five of them. So, all right, that's it. Thanks for watching.